Hello and welcome to this Panel Pilot Ace tutorial video. Today I'll be showing you how to use the new data logging functionality. So this video kicks pretty much off the back of installing the Panel Pilot Ace beta software. So you can see here I've got my link to the Panel Pilot Ace beta software that I've installed. You can check out our other YouTube video which will show you how to install this if you haven't already done so. So here we go, I'll just run the software. Brilliant, there we go. So the first thing I'm going to do is create a new project and I'm going to call this data log example. So if this is the first time doing this you may need to select your device model here. So just select the 43A assuming that's what you're using. Uh, specify your project path, I'll just leave it as the default for now. And tick remember device model and project path if you haven't already done so. Okay, brilliant. So here's our blank canvas. Okay, so the log variable is basically comprised of two sections. Uh, you've got your your variable, so this is going to be a global variable. Uh, you, you'll only need one across the whole screen per per log you want, uh, and this is actually going to be the file that you see when you want to download. So this name is is important that you, it represents what you what you're logging. So in this example, I'm going to be logging power from two analog inputs. So I'm going to call this log power. So uh, the name is standard as per all the other elements. Your maximum data points. So what this is specifying is, is how many data points you can physically have in this log before it does whatever you specify in the rollover behavior. So you could have an unlimited number of data logs uh, or if you're interested in say the last day's information you could set this up appropriately. Uh, I'm going to specify the last day, I think sounds sounds pretty reasonable. Uh, obviously that's going to depend on your interval here. So these work in basically the same way as a timer if you're familiar with a timer. So I want, let's have one minute logging. So 60,000 milliseconds, 60 seconds, that's a minute. Uh, and then I'm going to want uh, however many data points that is in a day. So let me just work that out quickly. So, so 60 minutes in an hour times by 24 hours in a day, 1440. So here you go, 1440 data points. So this log will now store the last day's uh, readings taken every minute. Uh, and as the rollover behavior, we've got two options. We can either append the data. So what that's going to do is remove the oldest data and put the new data on the end uh, when you start rolling over. So on my 1441st data point, the first data point will be lost. Everything will be shifted left. And the last data point will, will become the new reading. Alternatively, we can ignore, which means that anything subsequent to the first day will be lost. So I'm going to stick with append, so I get the last day's worth of readings. Okay, uh, start delay immediate, so th this just means that when you turn on the device it could wait a fixed period of time. If, for example, your sensor has an initialization period, you may want to use that. Uh, an automatic start, so you could effectively start it from a button or something like that if needs be later on. This would be what you want to use for that. Okay, so that's the log variable. Okay, so next up is the functional element that is linked to the log variable. So here we go, we've got a data logging element here. So I'm just going to drag one of those into my project. So it's important to note first off that all function elements, visual elements, hardware elements are page specific. So this element will need to be on every page that you want the log to occur on. Uh, now there's a couple of reasons for this, but the, the main reason is that whatever you're logging has to be present on every page. So if, for example, you were on a separate page that didn't have the hardware element you were logging, then the log variable simply couldn't take a log. So this, this is basically a pointer to whatever needs to be logged. So you can see up here, again, we've got a, a name. So again, this can be different on every page, but I would suggest making it the same. Uh, so let's call this logging power 
with a G, preferably. Okay. And so the the value, th this is basically specifying what value is going to be logged. So in this example, I'm actually going to be doing power. So I'm going to create the elements needed that I need to log now. So I'm going to have two analog inputs called input current. Help if I could type and input voltage. So as I'm sure some of you are aware voltage times by current gives us power. So what I'm going to do is have a maths builder. So you could directly log from an, an element that inputs but I figure it's best to give the more complicated example uh, for example using a maths builder. The, the procedure is exactly the same apart from you don't have the maths builder. So here I'm literally just going to multiply the two values together. So you are the input current dot voltage times by input voltage dot voltage and I like to always specify in the decimal points of a mass builder to unlimited which helps the calculations be a bit more accurate okay so now value power is the the value we want to log so here I'm going to specify value power as my element so next you then need the the log variable that it's going to link this to so log underscore power as I created earlier uh, enabled is just a way of stopping this log from occurring okay so there you go they're your two main elements now you've got your log variable which is now linked to your logging element here on this page and as I said before if you have multiple pages and you want the logging to be occurring on any of those pages just make sure this element is copied and pasted to all of the other pages okay so now that we've gone through the logging element and the logging variable here the next thing I want to show you is uh, how to get variables results from that data so for example the maximum value in a log the average value in a log uh, so what we've done is we've actually added several functions to the maths builder so what I'll do here I'm just going to display the average power uh, and in order to get that, if you click on the functions here, you see these new get log average, get log max, min, count, value at functions. So what these allow you to do is get specific data from, from a data log. So for example here I want the average and then you just need to pass it the log variable, so log power. Don't forget to close the bracket and now this maths builder will have the average value stored in this data log conveniently this ties in nicely because I want to be able to display something on screen anyway otherwise it won't let me create the project so text underscore average uh, average power not point not not what <coughs> okay so I'm just gonna position this nicely quickly we go align center hug the left wall width 480 in fact let's just auto fit to the content uh, but then stretch it across the whole page and make sure it's aligned in the center perfect so we got our nice little display there and what I want to do is just quickly create a string builder so that I can update this value here Okay, well, average power, and this is going to be coming from the value average power. Uh, I want two decimal places, natural format, prefix is going to be average power with a space, and the suffix is going to be watts. Okay, so this string will now be correct to update this text box which I'm going to do using two things. I'm going to use the action set rule and a property trigger. So if you want any more information on how to use the action set rule or the property trigger, uh, there are other tutorial videos which, which will go through it in more depth. Uh, at this point, I just need this for my application. 
you can also download this application and, and have a look try and pick it apart yourself so this is going to update average okay and this trigger is when either the well this is the trigger for the current and we're going to need another one for when the voltage changes okay so let's just quickly specify these so this is going to be linked to the help if I could read it okay so input current voltage changed and that's going to update the average similarly if the voltage dot voltage changes we're going to also update the average and all that we're going to do to update the average is set the text in the text box equal to our new string builder so that's string average power okay lovely so there you go that is our maths builder function used we now have something on the screen so we can actually upload it to one of the devices so I have now connected one of my SGG 43A devices to the computer you can see it connected up here we got the uh, serial number model and software uh, this button here will give us the options for the device so for example retrieve device log data which we'll do as soon as we've uploaded the project uh, you can do a couple of other things like configure the device etc but uh, won't go into that for too much for now. So the main thing to notice is that the software version is now 2.1.6.2819 uh, which is latest and greatest at the launching of this video so it should be able to cope with data logging. So I'm just going to upload the project to the device. There you go, device is successfully uploaded and rebooted and it is now displaying an average power of zero which is wonderful. Uh, so what I'm going to do now is leave this running for a little bit, uh, accumulate a couple of logs so that we can actually have something to download. Okay, so I've left the device running for a little while now, uh, so hopefully when we download the logs we'll actually be able to see something of interest. So what I'm going to do is just click on this options for the device and retrieve device logged data. So here you go, you'll see it on your device as well, but it, it runs through and checks what, what logs are available on the device. Here you can see our log power. So as I said before, that matches, I can't show you now, but it matches the name of the log variable we specified earlier. Um, and you can see I'm, I want to put it on my desktop. And what this will do is it will just copy it through with the same name. So I've selected the log I want here, and we can just click copy and you'll see we've successfully retrieved that logged file so if I go to my desktop now here we go log underscore power dot csv so if I open this up in Excel which is the default uh, to open with you'll simply see each log uh, with the date time and the value uh, so I haven't been very creative with my logs here I probably could have left it running for a bit longer but oh well so you could graph this in Excel if you wanted. Uh, you'll note this is quite an old version of Excel, but here we go. <coughs> uh, voila, you've got your data points here. Thank you for watching this Panel Pilot Ace tutorial video.